added a bunch of chapters. If you take your right thumb and you scrub along the bottom, you can find the chapter you're looking for, or if you get bored, pick one you like. Three ways of setting up the Fox Float X2. You can use Fox's chart, that's really good. Number two, you're gonna do my way on the trail. And number three way is the Shock Wizard, which is the best. Basically, you plug that Shock Wizard into your shock, tell it how you want it to ride, and it will do an amazing job. If some parts of this video are too advanced, like removing volume spacers, just skip that step, do it at a later date. Get on the computer and type in Fox Shock ID. First thing that comes up, we're gonna type in that four digit code. My shock is a 2021 Specialized Enduro Fox Float X2. Now we did a proper background check on her. I think she's good to sleep with. Let's talk about calculating volume spacers. I know that shock can take two volume spacers. I was on a very similar bike last summer, but it was an electric bike. So I'm gonna go for one spacer. You need to take your system weight, that's you and the bike. My bike weighs 38 pounds, I'm about 213. Total system weight is roughly 250 pounds. It's an Amish bike, I'm not gonna ride it quite as hard because I am a C plus rider. If your shock has this dial right here, that means it's a second generation Fox Float X2. If you have no spinner back here, you're in luck because the older Fox Float X2 had more adjustments. If your Fox Float X2 is installed on the bike, we're gonna need to pull it off for this step. This is the hardware for my bike, Specialized Enduro, nothing needed. If you're adding a Fox Float X2 to your bike, go to thelostco.com. They have an amazing database for getting the right hardware. This is very important because this shock is huge and it can contact the frame. We're gonna open this shock up, so let's give it a quick bath and let the pressure out slowly. Press the Schrader valve down to verify there's no air in there. Locate this ring on the lower part of the shock. Use some kind of pick to get underneath it. That clip will come out fairly easy most of the time. With a clean shock in a clean environment, we're gonna pull the canister down. We have two spacers installed. Since this is an Amish bike and I was on an e-bike with max spacers last summer, I'm actually gonna remove one spacer because this is a lighter system weight. We're gonna put this back on. It'll just slide up, putting some light pressure on here and spinning it, we're looking for the channel. Using the pick, I took the ring and slid it over to the middle to make sure it's not gonna come out. We need to double, triple check that that ring is seated in the groove very good. Very dangerous if you don't. Give the shock a nice bath again because it's covered in oil and that's gonna attract a lot of dirt. 40 PSI in this shock. Make sure all the correct hardware is installed on the shock. Now let's put it in. When you're threading the shock bolts in, you need to either remove the rear tire or you need to lift it up to unweight the threads. Get on YouTube shorts and start flexing that suspension slowly. Making sure nothing hits the frame. Trust me on this, I nearly ruined a frame because I had the air valve on the wrong side and this is a very chunky shock. Full travel on the shock, we have no frame contact nothing is binding. Now I'm going to fully inflate the shock because there's no frame contact. This shock is very special because you need to pump 50 PSI and then press the suspension down. Get a little piece of cardboard and draw a line. I want you to draw a line to where the travel stops. So this shock has a claimed 60 millimeter stroke, but it only actually has 56 millimeters. 30% of 56 is 16.8 millimeters. So we fully pumped the shock up to our body weight, and now we're gonna check the sag. 
Now I need to go up in pressure. This is an educational video, so I don't care about view duration for once. So we just set the sag to 30%. I highly recommend making a handy dandy tool. My shock says it's a 60 millimeter, but it only has 56 millimeters of usable stroke. So I got the sag set. It's my body weight plus 40 PSI. You could try that. It probably worked pretty good. So I ended up with 250 PSI. Setting the dials on your Fox Float X2 for your first ride. We need to not overcomplicate this thing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the six millimeter Allen key on the compression knob and we're gonna turn it all the way counterclockwise. Then we're gonna take the high speed compression and we're gonna turn that one all the way counterclockwise. This is all the way open. Now we're gonna act like the blue knob does not exist. Now we're gonna only play with the red ones for the first part of the ride. Now take the red knob, turn it all the way counterclockwise. It has 16 clicks of adjustment. We're gonna count counterclockwise 10 clicks. If you have the newer Fox Float X2, there's eight clicks of high speed rebound. What we are gonna do, we're gonna put the high speed rebound in the middle. completely eliminated the compression, the blue knob. We have those all the way wide open. The rebound knob, we're gonna start on the red knobs. We have those dead in the middle and we're gonna go ride some trail. Whenever you see the low speed on the dials, just think flow trails. So this is a flow trail up here. The lower section of this trail has some high speed impacts. We'll be setting the high speed rebound and compression on this section of trail. This is the third time I'm gonna say this. Do not touch the blue one until we get the red one first. First couple runs are gonna be on the flow section up here, and we're only gonna to touch the three millimeter Allen key. We're starting off in the dead middle, and I'm gonna progressively turn it slower until it feels too slow. Go slow on the rebound, you're less likely to eat crap. We've got base camp set up here, backpack off, and we got some paper. We're gonna be run one, flow, Low speed rebound is in the middle. I'm gonna write down a little note after I run it and see how it feels. Run one felt good. It felt good. We're gonna go two clicks slower on low speed because we're just doing flow. We are on low speed rebound. Slower is going to be clockwise. Two clicks slower, one, two. I felt more confident with the slower rebound. Low speed rebound felt amazing. It felt more playful with a faster rebound when it was set in the middle but I'm a less experienced rider, so I like a slower rebound, it's safer. Our handy dandy tool tells us we're using all of the shocks travel, but I don't care about the blue one until we get the red one first. Don't worry about blowing through all the travel when you're adjusting the rebound. If you only ride on mellow trails, just disregard the high speed adjusters and set it to what Fox says. High speed rebound section. High speed rebound set in the middle was too fast. It felt a little bucky. I went two clicks slower on the high speed rebound and it felt amazing. If you remember, we have the blue knobs wide open. All the way counterclockwise is wide open compression. What makes this shock so badass 
is the compression on this shock. Once you get it right, it's gonna feel like you're on a pillow. We're gonna start again on the blue flow trail with the low speed compression. We're gonna give it five clicks. Now we're gonna do a run on the blue flow trail up top. Five turns firm from all the way to the left. I'm starting to get the magic feeling. There's 18 total clicks of low speed compression. So I'm gonna add three more. That's of high speed, low speed compression. Second run. So on run two, I went three clicks firmer and it felt bad. It felt a little bit harsh, so we're gonna back off two clicks. Okay, I've got the low speed, the three millimeter blue one. I got that one super dialed. Now we're gonna work on the high speed compression. If you only ride on mellow trails, just disregard the high speed adjusters and set it to what Fox says. We dialed, so we're moving to the six millimeter key and we're gonna make that one, we're gonna go to the middle on high speed compression. One, two, three, four, five. I'm completely, I'm getting tired, so we're making bigger adjustments this time. I got the shock about 90%, but the problem is I'm not used to riding an Amish bike and I'm completely gassed. So I gotta call it for the day, finish this up at a bike park tomorrow. So today we're at a ghetto city park between two freeways. It should be plenty of bike park to get that compression to its final tune. Compression is a bigger deal when you're dealing with jumps. I'm gonna recheck the low speed compression on these little jumps here, and then we're gonna move on as usual to the high speed compression on some bigger hits. Couple runs on these small jumps, I turn the low speed compression one turn softer. After hitting a couple bigger jumps, I went one click firmer on the high speed compression. Set the compression up for your favorite trail and leave it alone because it can be a trap. You could spend the next hundred years adjusting compression on every section of trail. Sophisticated suspension can be a blessing and a curse. It's very complex to set up, but it rides amazing. But let me show you what happened to it today after I cased the jump. The notorious air in the oil happened to my X2. Super common problem. Supposedly Fox fixed this issue, but I'm gonna send it in and we'll find out. I made some ghetto animations. I put them into Google Drive. They're in the description below. Print about five of these off and you're gonna be much easier on setup and you can remember where you are visually. Hope you got some value out of this. See you on the next one.